Hey there, YouTube. Just uh, uh, gonna do a video on uh, moving to Tonga, moving to the Pacific, especially here in Tonga. And uh, this is a shout out to uh, Helen, who had uh, requested a video about um, someone, uh, a foreigner, moving over to Tonga and what to expect over here. So I would actually say the first things first, um, you gotta have a place to stay. Uh, so make sure you got some land and a property to be able to come and stay at. Um, if you're gonna seclude or actually put yourself here long term and here forever, yeah, make sure you got some land Make sure you got a property, uh, house to stay in, or build your house while you're staying at family or whatever, whatever it is there. Uh, the the situation if you're just bought your land and you're going to build. So second of all, there's money involved, right? So you gotta you gotta have abundance of money uh, to be able to make it happen. You don't have to if you've got your own land. Let's say. 16 acres of land or whatever, but it depends on. Who you are, if you are with a family, uh, what husband, wife, and let's say four kids, um, abundance of money. Um, I I'd say at least half a mil um, to be able to set yourself here, uh, build your house, have a property, um, and also so you're buying a property, you're buying a house, uh, building a house, and then. You're establishing yourself here and also the third thing is have a business here uh, have a small business to be able to um, create an income here and whatever it is going to be agriculture shop um, I don't know a printing company whatever it is uh, have a really uh, good company that um, is gonna survive because um, a lot of people come over and do ideas, they, they go overseas, grab money, come over here, do a business, doesn't work, fails, and then they start all over again. But by the time they start all over again, they run out of money. So make sure you do your homework on whatever it is. And if you're coming here for a, a job, like um, you're coming to work, um, females, there's probably quite a few places that you can work in. Um, but it's not great money, to be honest. It's not great money. Um, you're looking for contractors or uh, building people, like let's say for the husbands, at least um, if they want to be builders, there's a lot of work in that um, area there where they just, and they the maximum, I would say 500 a week, um, you're earning around about that much, $100 a day, something like that. So... It's not great money, um, so I'd rather do your own business. What we do here to support ourselves until our crops grow and whatever, our vanilla commercial crops and that grow, we're only doing donuts, and that we get around about 450 a week, um, and we can survive off of that. That's uh, actually profit. We'd probably get, yeah, probably get around about 300 a week profit, something like that. So, and we survive for that, uh, but that's the bare minimum. Bare minimum, um, and we got no kids here that, that we need the support to put in school or anything like that. So you got to have an income that is able to support your your kids, your materials. Most schools are pretty pretty cheap during the year. It's just when it comes to exams, um, you have to pay for each an individual exam. Uh, so like two hundred dollars a subject or something like that. So just be aware with that. If you got four kids, you for exams you're paying. If that's in high school, primary school, don't have to pay. So for exams, so that's all right. It's just high school. Um, it does get expensive later on, but uh, it's it is what it is. Also, if you're in the main island, great business. Uh, you got uh, what do you call it? Um, yourself settled there as long as you have uh, your own income with your own business you'll be set uh, the other thing is um, just the basics what kind of footwear do we wear here
Man, I use Crocs all the time. Crocs all the time. Crocs, gum boots, and boots, and jandals. So I'll have my indoor Crocs that I wear inside the house, um, nice and clean. And then I'll have my Crocs that I wear outside. And I just use that around the garden area and whatnot. If they get dirty, it's fine, and I'll just leave them at the doorstep. Then I'll have my jandals, because I can go and have a shower. My jandals, clean my jandals, slippers, flip-flops, thongs, whatever you want to call it, wherever you are in the world. Um, there's so many names for it. Um, so, yeah, over here is very, very popular with the thongs, or slippers, flip-flops, whatever you want to call it. So very popular over here. Everyone wears them. And the reason why is easy to clean. When it gets muddy, rainy, whatever, it gets wet, it's fine. You just keep walking in puddles or whatever and with jandals. And you're cleaning your feet and, and jandals at the same time. But um, uh, I use Crocs most of the time. And then jandals when I go to uh, flippers, flip-flops. When I go to church, sometimes I even wear Crocs to church sometimes. So... There's no harm in that. If you're a fitness fanatic, yeah, get a good pair of sneakers um, for your running. If you're a person that treks all the time, get a comfortable pair of trekking shoes. Um, I cannot. And make sure they're not, I mean, they're not like $500 worth of pair of shoes, you know, because like, you're going to ruin them. And the thing over here with uh, the weather, rubber, there's certain rubber on your soles or it deteriorates over here. A lot of rubber stuff deteriorates. It's because of the, the humid, humidity in the air. And I guess it's a bit of a, the salt in the air as well. And, and it's just over a couple of years, uh, over a year, your soles on certain shoes deteriorate. Um, and also parts in cars as well where you got rubber bushes and all that. That deteriorates quite fast as well. Um, get a decent vehicle, so there's maintenance, uh, not ma everything uh, you have to maintain, right, oil and whatnot, but um, over here in Ewa, that we're not on the main island, is four wheel drives. If you're running a business, get a pickup, because um, you just throw stuff in the back, um, you throw the kids in the back as well, in the back of the, in the tray, so over here you can do that, but you got to wear seat belts, two people in the front. Uh, they got to wear seatbelts. Chuck the kids in the back. They can stand up in the tray and whatever. No problem. So, uh, I don't get that. I don't, it might as well make one rule for everyone. Because it's safe for everyone. But over here, if you don't wear a seatbelt in the front, you're the driver or the passenger, um, you're $500 fine. What else is there? Uh, um, diesel. So your diesel and petrol is very expensive here. Diesel at the moment over here is three dollars seventy, three dollars seventy for a liter, three dollars seventy-five. Sometimes nearly gets to four dollars, and it's sort of very similar with the petrol as well. So gas is expensive. Um, for our nine kg for a gas um, is fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for a nine kg gas to fill up for our stove. Um, nothing's on mains with gas, so you got to um, bottle. Um, or exchange bottles. Um, usually, they usually use the 13 kilos over here. Uh, very rarely they use the 9, uh, but ma mainly 13 kilos. Uh, that's around about $75 for a 13 kilo. Um, and if you want to swap, it's around about $82. So with your gas, it's up to you what you want to do with it. Um, buy a gas, awesome if you can do that. You know, you, it's your own gas, but uh, it's, it's a bit of money and a bit of work and a bit of knowledge to be able to get that going. Uh, what else? Um, sightseeing. Do all of that. And I recommend you come over for a month for a holiday to just check it out. You can't just come over here blindly and just expect the best because that's what my mum did, to be honest. My dad said, oh, yeah, it's awesome over there. You know, tropicals, palms, banana trees and everything. Yes, they have all of that. But the rain, the mud, it's, it's not concrete everywhere. It's There's no walk paths. There's no... It's mud and rock. And, and most, of, most of the roads is rock. 
And so you got potholes everywhere. Only the main roads are tarred, and they got potholes everywhere as well. So a vehicle, decent suspension. I pretty much going to go Toyota, 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 because um, they last. And what I've got is Land Cruisers, but a one Land Cruiser. I sold my other one, and I I deal with that. Um, but yeah. Also, if you're a family coming over um, and your husband has land, your husband has land and the female is the foreigner, be careful, guys. Make sure your marriage is solid because if it's not, it gets quite difficult and if you split up, it's, it's a hard thing. Let's say the foreigner or the wife has made all the money in the past and she's banked all of this on coming over here, right? And if you two are still young and you end up splitting up, whatever the, the male has the authority of that land and house or whatever that's there, you could probably take it to court and whatever and try and get half or whatever. It's a long process and you probably won't even get anywhere anyway because you're a foreigner. Um, you got to get lawyers and whatnot. It's a lot of money. So I wouldn't do that. So make sure your marriage is rock solid. Um, hopefully, hopefully you're a Christian and a Bible believing Christian, and uh, everything's hunky dory and, and the, the relationship's really good. Um, but if not, if you still got that uh, in your brain that it's uh, maybe it's an iffy relationship, don't make the move until you know it's rock solid. You're married. Um, uh, I don't know if you've been married for 10 years or whatever it is, you know, and, and, and it's solid. It's rock solid. You guys know each other inside and out. Um, yeah, make the move. No problem. And if you're willing to make that move. Also, um, so yeah, the land is put in the, the male's name, uh, the Tongan male's name. So a foreigner cannot own land over here uh, unless they marry a Tongan. Um, or have a shareholder with a Tongan, and the Tongan has the main uh, part of the business. So you got to also have a look at that as well. Um, make sure your documents are, uh, you got all your documents ready. To you probably come over first, do your visas, probably do a two year, five year, five year visa, something like that, and try and get citizenship after that um, if you can. Uh, it is a long process. It's who you know most of the time. And here in Tonga, it is definitely who you know. And you got to always have your ear to the ground. Make sure you hear what's going on. Because there could be stuff that is going on that could help you. And that you have no idea um, there is help there out there. Or someone's got this and you didn't know. And this is what you wanted at the time. So always put your ear, ear to the ground and... and over here, the men, this is what they do over here. They go fake kawa, or they go drink kawa, and um, that's where the communication happens, and questions, and whatever, and they, they get to know each other. But um, as a foreigner, you probably won't be drinking kawa, and that's fine. Uh, so always get involved with the community, basically what it is. Um, if you're a church, um, uh, going to a church, Make sure you go into a church and also get involved in there. So there's also uh, communication coming in through that way where there's always help there or stuff that you, you, that you want done and you can get help that way. Or um, also, sorry, also the communication over here with Tongan. A lot of people do speak to uh, English, but it's not really, they don't really speak it. And also, especially in Elwa, not many people, uh, not a lot, a lot of people speak Tongan over here. I mean, English over here. So you got some of the kids that do, some of the kids that don't, depending how they're doing at school. And some of the schools are not that really good at teaching the kids English. Um, I don't know why, but there's a lot of high schoolers here that have no idea what they're what you're talking about if you're speaking to them in English. 
And it's frustrating because the, the education system should be better here. I know when I was growing up here, when I was a youngster, I had to speak English. I went to Beulah, it was a Seventh day Adventist church, uh, a college. And I was there for one year. No one was to, uh, no one was allowed to speak Tongan at all. You had to speak English. So it was a little bit more stricter back then, I reckon. I, nowadays, not really. So I don't know what has changed there. Um, also, food over here. You have your takeaways. Over here in Ewa, it's a lot different from over in Tonga. Over in Tonga, you can get all your overseas food, but to an extent. So you will be craving uh, certain things that you can get over overseas in New Zealand, Australia, or America, wherever you are. You get your local foods over there, and you can go Hungry Jack's, McDonald's, KFC, um, Takeaways, Chinese, and you can't really get them. Well, you can't get any of those takeaways here at all in the main island either. There's nothing like that. So you might get special, like you get some of the Asians over there, they'll do Chinese. Um, the, what else? That The Chinese, you can get the Chinese food, but other than that, it's mainly Tongan food. You got your KFC over there, they call it KFC. Um, but it's just fried chicken and with manioke, that's $6 over in the, in the main island. I think it's $8 over here. Um, yeah, that's a meal. It fill you up. But uh, then you got the other other meals that are probably around about $10. And then you got curry uh, lamb. But it's lamb flaps. It's not your, your nice lamb that you get overseas. It's your lamb flaps. So the, the, the ribs of the lamb has been cut up and uh, curried. Uh, also, you got... Uh, uh, chicken, mainly the main main food over here is chicken. And it's Maryland's that you buy over here. It's 15 kilos of Maryland's. It's the leg plus the thigh together. And 15 kilos of that is around about 70 to $80, depending on the price at the time. So it's around about that, that price. Um, and then you, over in the main island, there's a lot of veggies, all that kind of stuff in local markets. You can buy all your fruit and veggies there. It's quite abundant over there. Um, over here in Ewa, it's seasonal and it's very hard to get veggies sometimes certain years. But sometimes there's, there's a lot of veggies in certain years. This year has been great with um, tomatoes um, over here is, and cabbages. So the locals have been growing a fair bit of tomatoes. And I think Hung on the Agriculture Show, uh, Agriculture uh, School over here have been uh, planting cabbages and bok choy and all that kind of stuff. So that's good. During the winter, we have that. Summer, none of that. Uh, maybe some tomatoes, that's about it. And then you got your local summer. Then you have in December around there, pineapples and mangoes. Um, bananas and that should be all year round, but it's very rare. Over here in Ewa, over in Main Island, you'll get it. But things are a lot, lot more, uh, they're, they're expensive. Well, depends. Coming from Australia, is not that expensive. But over here, it's expensive for over here. Because for uh, one watermelon, that's probably 10 kilos. It's probably 20 to 30 to 40 dollars, depending on the season, where it is, and how much watermelons there are. So they can get expensive. Uh, well, I will grow, we're going to grow our own this year, we're going to grow our own watermelons last year, but yeah. Um, so a lot of that seasonal, you won't get watermelons in the winter, you get that in the summer. Uh, some might grow some in the winter, and but they won't be that great. They won't be as sweet, and they'll be a little bit smaller. What else? Uh, power. You're looking at your power and your water rates. They're quite cheap. Um... For, uh, let's say, a couple with four kids and you have lights on and everything going all the time, you're probably looking at about $200 a month in between there, around about uh, power. Uh, yeah, and also if you're going to build over here, material is expensive. Uh, with your 4 by 2 for 6 meters is around about $50, so $50 upwards. So be aware, with building materials over here, it gets quite expensive. If I had to do it all over again, 
or we had to get to do it all over again, we would do a flat pack and just get a four bedroom flat pack from overseas where the container just folds out or extends out, has everything already in there. All I need is a base, um, concrete stilts. You get need the land, concrete stilts or uh, uh, slab, whichever one you want to do. And then also a septic tank to plumb it to. That's pretty much it. And then hook your electric and water to. So I would do that um, if I had to do it again. It's a lot cheaper. You're looking around about 27 grand um, Australian for a two bedroom. Um, and I can't remember how much it was for three or four. But yeah, a flat pack is around about that much. I got a quote from Tonga and that's what they're charging. So yeah, I would probably do that because for this, for a house, you're looking at labor. If you don't know anyone that can help you out and whatnot, but it's, it's difficult. You'd rather pay everyone um, properly so they can get the job done properly, have a contract signed, everything. This is get your plans uh, done up. Make sure you got plans for your, for your buildings. It's pretty much exactly like overseas. You gotta get your, your drawings, your plans, architecture, get all that sorted. Then you got um, your builder to be able to follow those plans to a T. Get all your materials, make sure you get all those materials that are here. Um, yeah, and it's it's a big process, but it's well worth it at the end once you, once you accomplish it um, and finish it. But yeah, it's a big move coming over overseas with a family. If you're single, whole different story. Whole different story. Single, come over here, have a bit of cash in your pocket, of course. And when you had enough, just go back overseas. But um, you can you can um, have a go over here, try and um, accomplish something over here, uh, make a business or whatever, and then start from there. But um, and then you've had enough from like it doesn't work out. You can always go back over home, you know, overseas. To if you're you're single and you're quite young in your twenties, you probably go back to mum and dad over uh, to Australia, New Zealand, or wherever you come from. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm what, 40, 47, so we started the move over in 2017, got stuck over in um, Australia for in for COVID for four years, and then we were able to come back and start again. But um, yeah, but luckily we had a ceiling over, the, over ourselves, a roof, sorry, a roof and walls. Pretty much, and a bathroom half done. Actually, a toilet in there, and a shower plumbed in. That was pretty much it, and none of the walls have been like it's just brick. Um, windows are in. Uh, we got that done, and the roof there was just still tin there, and um, what do you call it? Uh, trusses, and I've just starting to do the ceiling now, so. Yeah, we're still working on this, and it's been a long time, but um, we've run out of money for sure. And uh, yeah, so you just got to be aware of that. Money goes real fast when you're not working, um, doing an income, or getting an income. So make sure you've got an income uh, going. Um, yeah, so hopefully this helps you out a little bit, uh, Helen. And those over there that are thinking of that move, coming back over... Uh, the guys that are Tongans, they know what they're getting, uh, that have lived here, and the, or the women that are Tongans that have lived here, they know they, what they're getting into. Uh, but the foreigners, they have no idea because you have everything accessible overseas. Over here is totally different. Um, over there is nice, clean pathways. Everything's tarred. Um, the, you're going from aircon into a car to aircon into a mall or aircon into a house. And everything's air climatized, right? Over there when it's a bit too hot, a bit uncomfortable. Over here, totally different. So make sure you get a house with air con. Um, if you have, if you can, make sure it's air con, air con in your vehicle. Because um, in summer, it gets hot. I mean, it's hot. It's like maximum 32 degrees. But it is so humid that it's like hard to breathe, man. It's hard to work in for sure. So you got to get climatized to the climate. And um, <coughs> so, yeah, if you don't have aircon over here, you're probably suffering for the first year. 
or the first six months or whatever, or until it gets to winter, you know? So, and even in winter, it's still humid. I'm in a singlet. It's the end of winter now, September now, so it's going into a little bit warmer climate. Well, it's supposed to be already a bit warmer now, but it's still a bit cool. So, yeah, I don't know what's happening there, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a big change. Just be aware. Come for that holiday for about a month. Um, if you gotta, if you gotta make a move, make sure you got enough money to come for a holiday and be able to, you know, enjoy the sights and whatever you want to enjoy. Cause, and then also get into the, the towns, like get into the local villages and meet the people and, you know, family and friends, hopefully your husband or, or your wife has family over here that you can, um, enjoy or, and there's one more thing that you got to worry about is family sometimes they can suck you dry meaning take all your money <laughs> or try to anyway and anyway, just be smart about spending um they don't mean to it's just because what it is over over they see a foreigner coming over and they think money oh they got money you know and oh oh they've got two of those they got two of those can i have one of these can i have one of these Oh, yeah, you got two pairs of sneakers. Oh, can I have one pair of sneakers? It's like that. And even though you got two pair of boots, you're leaving one pair for a backup. There's, they don't think like that. They just, I want you, you got, you got two? Can I have one? It's like that over here. So family, so uh, if you meet family that is like that, yeah, you do get family like that. So they just be aware, be on your guard. I know... Uh, family, you love family, but just be aware about that with family, because um, they don't mean to take you for a ride or whatever and and drain you. But it's just they see you as a overseas person that has money, so you you've got a bundle of money, and then you just and especially if you love them as family, you're gonna spend money on them. And, and of course, you're going to do that. Um, I do. I did. And I don't regret it. Um, it's just one of the things that you do, you know. It's a learning curve. So now it's more like I try to hold myself a little bit back and sort of not, um, what do you call it? Not exploit what you have. Because if you do and you brag about it or anything like that, they sort of, they can get in and go, oh yeah, you got two of those? Can I have one of those? You know, it's like that. So just be aware. And for a female, for a female coming over, oh, it's heartbreaking. Because uh, my wife, I know my mum went through the same thing. So my wife has gone through it. Um, it's just is what it is. But my wife is quite loving and she, she gives stuff away anyway. Like today we gave away a freezer, a small one. Um, this uh, lady, uh, her, her husband passed away and we're very good friends with her and they had their freezer broke down. So we had a spare freezer in the container that's been sitting for seven, six years. So you know what? See if this works. Give it to her. It is what it is. We have two here that are working. So we didn't need that one. Give it away. That's fine. It's, it's not, you know, it's the things that you do. We do it out of our love, uh, out of the love that we, we care for other people. And if we got more than enough, of course you're going to give it away. Especially the the good thing that I like about giving away when you're growing a farm is when you got abundant of, let's say, um, taro or or kumala, meaning uh, sweet potato or manioc or whatever. You can give a basket away, and there's nothing. It's 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 nothing over here. You can do that over in the main line bit different they sell everything over here because everyone needs money to survive over there over here a lot of farming is happening over here and they they give and take to family um family's got no food and they'll they'll give a basket of food or something like that but they're learning over here that everything costs money because um with um the people um going the tongan people going over and picking overseas uh, they work there for like six six to nine months, um, full on, for their families. They work over there, and then after that nine months, then they come back. 
maybe build a house with the money that they've um they've earned or whatever or get a car or something like that to help themselves out and then go back for nine months they know it costs money um, and you have to work for it um over here back then in the olden days it, it's sort of yeah give it away give it away give it away. it's not it's nothing because uh, you got heaps of plantations and it's yeah whatever yeah yeah help yourself take some money you'll get take some mine no problem but now it's a lot has changed it's not like that anymore um but it is a little bit with over an hour because if you got plenty of something you're going to give away to some to the church or pastor or your family you got more more than enough sell some give some away that's why you grow a lot more than you can can eat or sell and that's why you um can give some away how i do it is make sure that i whatever i grow pays back what i've spent on it and as all it is probably a couple of hours of plowing and 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 um mounting up um some dirt so it's probably two hundred dollars or something like that two to three hundred dollars but yeah as long as i can get that back no problem and then it feeds us for a long time so the way we do it over here is probably going to be different from the way you you were going to do it um but yeah we live off grid we've got no water no power coming into this property we've got rainwater tanks solar power and um we are totally disconnected from all towns we're way out in the bush so yeah it's it's uh we like it like that uh, we're away from town we only go to town to to take our donuts or whatever and sell and we come back or we go for for church that's all and then we stay on our property and, and keep working here uh, we enjoy it that way um and but it is enjoyable talking to to the people as well as you know i probably i, I speak uh, fluent tongan and i get involved with uh, the boys that i grew up with back in the days i just have a cute few conversations and it's good to to have um uh knowledge on how to do stuff over here uh, because that's local knowledge is good with growing agriculture or food um it's good to have that knowledge and that's where you get that knowledge from talking to other people um yeah i think i've had taken this a bit too long 32 minutes now so um hopefully enjoyed this video hopefully this has helped you out and god bless everyone bye for now